with the release of Godot 4.5 comes a host of new features. And one of those features is the stencil buffer support, which I thought we'd take a closer look at today. A stencil buffer is just like a depth buffer. It holds values for each pixel on the screen that you can use for masking. This allows us to do cool things like create outlines or see through objects, or even do something more advanced like you can see in this demonstration here. And this is all possible thanks to the stencil buffer. So let's look at how we can implement this in Godot. So let's add a new object to the scene just to show you what it looks like when you're going through this motion. I'll add a mesh. I'll add, and I'll make it a, a box mesh. I'll just bring it up here so you can see. And within that, you can add a material. You can add it in a several different places, but I'm just gonna add it within the mesh. We'll add a standard material 3D. I imagine you're pretty familiar with the standard material 3D, but in Godot 4.5, they've added a new thing down here called the stencil. And it's really easy. You've got a couple of different options, right? And at the most basic, you can just add an outline, right? And if we get close enough, you'll be able to see that an outline has been added. So prior to this, you used to have to add a new mesh. And you can see it's probably still here, create an outline mesh. So it create an outline mesh, and that's sort of the standard way that you would do it within Godot prior to this. But now you can just uh, create this outline here and you can increase the thickness. Okay, and then the same with X-ray. Say we wanted to be able to see this object through uh, the walls. You can just change this to X-ray and the color is black. So when I push this down, you'll see that you can see that it is black. and if you push it all the way through, it'll be there. And I'm pretty sure we'll be able to see this object through pretty much everything. Um, and so you can see, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, really handy for say a, a mode in the game where you perhaps can see through walls, or maybe you want to be able to see uh, a player behind something if it's like a fixed camera perspective, stuff like that. There is a really good example project, which I'll link in the description uh, from Apples, who is the person that made this contribution, so major thanks to him. If you go to his project, you can see a really good example of what X-Ray could look like in a game where this has been set up as here. You can see the object here has a bunch of different materials and surface material overrides, but it also has a material overlay, which is set up as um, albedo transparent. So if I turn the transparency off of this, you can see this overlay just has no texture on it, but uh, for its X-Ray, it's got a custom right and on that right, if you go up here, it's got an X-ray shader. So something that's worth noting that I didn't point out before on this project here is that when you add one of these stencil modes, you actually get a next pass on your material and you can add anything you want. Like right now, this is a color, but if I wanted to add a texture, I could do that, right? So I've got some prototype textures here where I could drag and drop onto this. And then I just reset that to, to clear, to white. And you can see now when it's below, it's actually got that texture on it. And if I pull it out, it'll just be whatever. So you could do something fun here. Um, this is the purple. Let's make it uh, dark like the floor, right? Um, and I come to albedo and I just drop like texture one on. And so now it's like this, which looks like crap because we need to turn on right planar. So there, and when you push it down, it turns purple. Um, and <laughs> it's also not tri planar, So we'll just change that as well here. Okay, and so now everything lines up and it turned, I don't know, it, you can see the advantages of doing something like that. And so that's really cool. You can also do a lot of really fun things. So this example is using two objects. It is a sphere that is occluding the object, right? So you can see as I move that, it sort of disappears. And this is sort of a similar principle to the lighting example that's in the project provided, right? So basically what we are doing here is if we go down to the stencil, this is all, there's no code here. So the, the sphere is set up to write and it's just transparent, right? It's, that's all. And we've set it up to be alpha and no depth test. You probably don't need that. Maybe it'll work a bit better without it. No, nope, we still get some weird camera stuff. And in order to get the, the object to sort of like make everything disappear, you come down to this one. This one's set up as custom read not equal, right? And so you have a couple of different things here. Like obviously if it's less equal it is really fun. That's just the opposite, right? And you can see what we've got some issues when it comes to the camera as well. Pretty fun stuff. So for read, 
you need to make sure that you've got your depth draw mode to never. If you don't, you're going to see a render server error, right? So if you're doing a custom read, it needs to be depth draw never, I believe, needs to be the one that we want. Yep. Okay. So that's a fun little trick that you can do. And the boat, which I think is a really good example, is simply we come to the water. This is just a water shader that I pulled from Godot Shaders. And then we've got the demo boat. Now the demo boat has two materials, right? So you've got a surface material for the inside and a surface material for the outside. And the outside is just a normal material, but the inside has got the stencil and it's writing and it's always. So it's always gonna write over everything, even if the water material, even if the water mesh clips through it, right? And then the water, that is a regular shader. It's not actually a material 3D. So if you come down to the shader, we've got a stencil mode, read, compare, not equal, and layer one. And so then you've got that. If we change this, say for example, to uh, number two for the reference, hit save on that. You can see that the water starts showing up on the inside. So on the cube, you can see that the reference is one. The stencil reference, value between zero to 255, typically about so reference one, we've got that. Cool. And so I think this is a really powerful example of some of the things that you can do with this. And it's really simple, right? Like it's not, there's no code. You just change this and you need to play. Sometimes you might need to play around with what you are writing here. Like you, you might not always know which one you need to have. I still have a, I'm still having a hard time understanding which one I need to choose here. Uh, I'm assuming always means it's always going to be written. Uh, and so that you will always see the inside of this, this boat, right? But play around with it to see what you get. But you can, you can see straight away like how easy this is to implement. A couple of different examples that I didn't do myself while I was playing around with this. Obviously, this x-ray is just on another level. Um, we have a camp provided by the creator. And this is really cool because you can see that we've got this uh, fire, this sort of low poly fire, but the flame is just sort of like a, a teardrop, right? And so if we turn this off, you can see that it just looks like this, but it's got this reed and then we've got this stencil and you can see the stencil has this texture which creates ripples, right? And you can, if you look at this, the, trans, the, the transparency setup is alpha scissor, which will essentially cut anything that's see-through, right? Um, and then you can see what they've done in the code here is they're setting the material UV offset on the process function. So what you get in effect is this scrolling texture. So you get this fire effect uh, literally for free. So if you just like scroll that, it just looks like that. So if I run this game, you can see how this looks. Um, obviously it's a certain style, but you know, really easy to implement, incredibly easy to in implement. Um, and then if we run this, you can see sort of the different outlines that you can do. The lighting is really cool. There is a sphere and it's writing to everything around it with this sort of like uh, white color. I actually changed this, it was originally just white. I changed it to like a more yellow just as I was playing around. But yeah, you know, uh, it, it creates a really like cell shaded lighting effect. Absolutely amazing, really easy to implement. So yeah, let me know what other features you want me to cover in Godot 4.5 and we'll start looking at them. Okay guys, that is the very brief look into stencils in Godot 4.5. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to get access to the third person course, you can always become a channel member. Of course, you get all my videos in advance if you do as well. And that's all for this week. I will see you all next time.